But yeah, we haven't had any problems with fireworks. Like we've had some going off and they don't really seem to give a fuck. Grady did not like the fireworks. Maybe we watch enough action movies that Grady went they don't care. When they started earlier this week, which I will point out was well before July yeah. 4th. When they started earlier last week, like around Wednesday, Grady heard all these exploding going outside. He went under my bed and he started screaming, presumably for the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh. Oh. I'm like, dude, it's okay. You could, It's not going to hurt you. No, he didn't like that. My baby still can't really meow yet. They still kind of squeak. Will you squeak? Will you squeak? No, I don't want to squeak right now, mommy. I'm trying to murder that thing. Hi. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, Dottie. There you go. Murder the thing. Yeah, we're still, we haven't reached the, uh, the actual multiple sounds phase yet. We just have little squeaks. Oh, so yeah, it's... Let's it's, not sniff the microphone. They can probably hear you running on it. Let's not do that. And I as, apologize if there was just a ch -ch 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 sound. And as, as we, we seem to have cats everywhere, it's interesting enough because we have a whole lot of animal stories this week. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do we Animal stories, like, like animals doing really cool shit. Tara, what show is this? Well, we had Hemingway Bear... I wouldn't say that was really cool shit. I thought bear was pretty fucking cool. <laughs> drinking does not make you cool. You're you're giving a wrong impression to the to the young. No, drinking and getting in fights makes you cool. <laughs> you're giving our impressionable young viewers who shouldn't even be here because this is an eighteen and up show. What are you doing? You're giving our impressionable young viewers a bad drinking does not make you cool. Even if you're a bear. Could we not be on the desk, please, kittens? Well, that's... Okay, okay, let's definitely not go inside the desk. Let's definitely not do that, okay? No. Well, that's where your attention is focused, hence that's where their attention is focused. See? Yeah. See? Okay, maybe we move the tower. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have very creative methods of getting off the tower. <laughs> Some are better than others. Sometimes we don't stick the landing. As I was saying, we have a large number of animal stories tonight. Oh, God. Yay. Let's get the intro going. Each week, Catherine radio dead air audience go out in the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff bring it back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you this week we're, we've got a kitty story I'm crazy we've got a kitty story that so is oh you little shits dan says that to these guys at least once a day <laughs> well yeah that i'm pretty sure every cat in the world is certain that its real name is oh you little shit <laughs> but not my babies you're little angels aren't you yes you are in this case this comes to us from a florida humane society shelter they had to leave the kitties alone for a little bit and that was a bad idea because one of them was a little smarter than the rest uh-oh Cat turns on faucet at Florida Humane Society, flooding the shelter. Oh no, the wet bandits. <laughs> Who knew they had a cat? Some cats at the Florida Humane Society in Papano Beach had to be taken out of the facility last week because of flooding. First staff at the animal shelter thought there was a burst pipe. Countertops are ruined, the walls are ruined. We had lots of damage with food and storage and, and we had in the hallway, including cat litter. The water came from a faucet in a cat room at the animal shelter. It's unclear which cat or cats are responsible. <laughs> the crew said the incident cost thousands of dollars worth of damage because many walls and cabinets need to be torn down because of mold. Hebert said the cats were safely up in their beds for about 17 hours, avoiding the water running below them before someone came in. Well, so, but they couldn't, like... 
they had to have eaten or pooped in that time. No, they can. Cats can go a long time without eating and pooping. True. When we drove to Missouri, Miracle went three days without pooping because she will not use the litter box in the car, even though we kept one for her. So what happened was this: a cat or got up on the, the, the onto the 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 the, uh, the counter, turned on the faucet, and it just kept running. And it flooded, so all the other cats are climbing up on stuff to avoid <laughs> the lake. And you know, all those other cats are looking over going, God damn it, Carl. Yeah. You fucker. What? What did no, I do? The water is evil. Why what? did you bring it? What did I do? God damn it. Every fucking time, Carl. What the fuck? What did I do? What's the problem, man? $5,000 to restore the cabinet walls. It's also in need of litter and food that was destroyed as well as foster families, because more cats will have to be moved during the renovations. Way to go, Carl! Oh, cats. You just... You fucked everything up. Well, they didn't know. They just probably wanted a drink. Do you, I don't know if Grady does this. Some cats will only drink out of the faucet. No, Grady's fine with his water bowl. When we were kids, one of our cats would not drink her water out of the bowl. You had to turn on the bathroom faucet for her. And then stand there and wait while she drank. Some cats are like that. No, what Grady will do is he will sit in front of the bowl. He first he will do this little dance. Where he will stand in front of the bowl. He will go eh, 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 like he's like moonwalking with his front paws. And then he will plop down, lay on his side. Heft his head over the lip of the bowl <laughs> and lay there on his side, <laughs> just drinking from the water bowl. Wow, okay. Like a civilized creature that he is. A little shit. He's, 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 but he's never expressed any interest in. In fact, when he discovered what the bathroom was for, he never went in there. He well, You cannot get him to go in the bathroom, not for love oh. nor money. He will not set foot in See, that Peggy bathroom. See, Peggy and Dottie are dying to get in the bathroom. We won't let them in there um, because they have a bad habit of eating everything that's on the floor. And we keep a bottle of bleach on the floor to spray down the shower and they keep trying to lick it. Oh, just wait till they have to have their first bath. They'll never want to go back in the bathroom again. Yeah. Ever. In fact, Peggy scared the crap out of us this week because, you know, like shitty furniture has those little discs on the end to make yes. it look like they're constructed with wooden pegs when they're not. Mm -hmm. She got one of those stuck in the roof of her mouth. And like all of a sudden she just starts doing this and like. And gagging, and we're like, oh my god, what happens? Dan's like, she probably tried to eat some bug that stung her. Like, half an hour, we're fussing with this and trying to figure out what's wrong. He brought her to the water bowl, and, like, Dottie's super protective of her. So Dottie is, like, at attention the whole time. Finally, like, N Dan held her down, and I pried her mouth open and found the thing in the roof of her mouth, the poor thing, but... Grady tried to eat a, st a staple. Yeah. I, I had to... He found a loose staple, presumably... When I got delivery or something, it popped out of the bag, and he found it, and I saw him going, ah, nah, 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 nah. and I'm like, oh, that can't be good. Yeah, they've not yet learned that if it's on the floor, that doesn't make it food or toys. So I had to fish a metal staple out of his mouth. It's like, it's like owning a little suicidal man <laughs> who can't speak English or poop in the toilet. Yeah, they do find all the mayhem. They're good at it. So yeah, cats. Th th this is way to go, Carl. I, I just, I'm just imagine just the death glare. All the other oh, cats. Oh All those other cats were probably pissed. The cats just looking at this lake underneath them. They're looking up like you son of a bitch. I'm gonna have you. When this all goes away, you're dead. <laughs> but we we go from cats now. To monkeys! We don't leave bleach water where they can reach it. That's why they're not allowed in that bathroom. I specifically said they're not allowed in that bathroom and we keep the door closed, guys. Like, they're okay. We're not letting them drink bleach. Now we, we, we move from cats to monkeys. So, many people are under the mistaken impression that monkeys 
are adorable little creatures that want to be friends. And you yeah. like monkeys because that's not true. That's not true. No, no. Monkeys do sometimes want to be friends with each other. But nine times out of ten, monkeys don't want to be friends with you. They don't like you because they're monkeys. They're little assholes. <laughs> well, a village in China decided to try to build their entire tourism around monkeys. Hmm. It has not gone well. Did they, did they let the monkeys loose? Oh, yes, they did. Chinese Hi. tourism plan backfires as destructive okay. monkeys overrun village. Oh, my. A Chinese village has become besieged by monkeys. I want to say that again because it's one of the best <laughs> things I've ever read. A Chinese village has become besieged by monkeys after a plan to woo tourists backfired in a spectacular way. Now terrorized locals are dealing with the catastrophic fallout of their ill-fated tourism strategy. Started in 2003 when a small troop of macaques were introduced to the village in China's southwestern Sichuan, Sichuan. Sichuan pro province in a bid to attract tourism. Villagers spent around seven weeks transporting 73 rhesus macaques from a nearby mountain range under a plan masterminded by the Zongfang village party secretary. Luring monkeys wasn't easy, he said. So right off the bat, their great idea was they were going to lure all of these monkeys into their town, and then people would come to see the monkeys in their town. That was the whole plan? It took a while to get them to stay, but they did. And tourists did start coming. Unfortunately, they started with 73. They ended up with 600 monkeys. Ooh. Because, you know, they do breed and stuff. And after the tourists stopped coming and people stopped taking care of the monkeys, the monkeys weren't having that. Yeah. They stuck around, having grown accustomed to life in captivity, no longer able to look after themselves in the wild. Now the mushrooming macaque population is wreaking havoc. They frequently destroy homes, eat fruits and crops, attack and bite tourists, and generally terrorize villagers. No matter how hard the villagers... I, I used to work with a girl from India, and she said India has a huge feral monkey problem. Not engineered by anyone, just they're local to India. And India has, at least it had, I don't know if it still does. This was like 10 years ago. Had a huge feral monkey problem to the point where a major, a mayor of a major Indian city was literally murdered by monkeys. Yes. They threw him off his balcony. Deputy mayor, and yes. Okay, yes. So like, monkeys are not your friends. And that was not a solid tourist strategy. No, it wasn't. Because they didn't really kind of think that because when like, so... Like, let's fill our town up with unpredictable wild animals. Not a great tourist strategy. And you can't fire the monkeys. Right. It's not like the guy in the, in the, in the goofy outfit at the Disney World. If you can't you, just let them go. If you fire Goofy, he goes and gets another job. Right. If you fire the monkeys... They will kill you. Or they will die. Because like it said, they're yeah. accustomed to being fed by humans. They literally can't survive in the wild now. Well, they're going to get fed one way or another. Yeah. One way or something. They're eating something. Either it's going to be your food or it might be you. They don't care. They're fucking monkeys. This was a bad idea. Yeah, you can't really reason with them. Oh, and it gets even better because it's harder to... They can't just... People are like, well, why don't they just go in and kill all the monkeys? They're a protected species in China. So instead of not just fucking around with a protected species in the first place... Yeah. Removing it from its natural mm -hmm. habitat. Yeah. Now they've got all of these fucking monkeys they can't kill. And... Oh, this, this is even better. The uh, tourism ceased operations after selling its ticket at the end of last month, leaving the villagers with little idea how to cope with the monkeys. 
So the government has pretty much just said, okay, well, uh, good luck. Have fun with your monkeys. Um, bye. They're your monkeys now. They're <laughs> not my circus, not my monkeys. But they are your monkeys. You no, no, no. They're, they're your monkeys now. Not mine. Yours. Merry Christmas. Monkeys. Bye-bye. I don't understand how that's a tourism strategy. <laughs> Let's fill our town with unpredictable wild animals. Profit. Like, I know Japan has that cat island that's mm -hmm. an island full of feral cats that people flock to, and I dream of retiring there because it's just an island full of cats. They're feral cats, though. They're asshole cats. Yeah, but they are getting used to people because people are starting to tour there. But that happened on its own. And, like, your average domestic short hair, even running in packs, are not just going to straight up murder people. Monkeys will. Monkeys will. These are, like, this is an island of not domesticated, but domestic breed cats. So even though they're feral, they're probably not going to kill you. And they have plenty of prey. So, you know, they're okay on their own, even if there's no tourism. Like, there's birds and mice and stuff for them to eat. And, Monkeys, on the other yeah. hand, are cannibals. Yeah. And they will eat you. They will eat people. They don't care. Yeah. They're monkeys. They don't give a fuck. Hi. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna kill that string. Okay, kill that string. But you know what, Tara? We've got more. Yay! Going back to Florida again. Florida. All right. I'm gonna start this story off by acknowledging. Swans are scary motherfuckers. Swans are assholes. Swans. Like, I know they're pretty. They're the fucking Regina George of the Wildlife Kingdom. Because they're pretty, but they're assholes. Swans, geese, ducks. They will fuck you up. They, they are mean little assholes. And swans are a lot bigger than they look. Their wingspan is enormous. Burr. Yeah. It's like they're all folded up and, oh, you're a little... No, they're not little. They're big and they will fuck you they up. They hiss. They're scary. They're mean. So I acknowledge that, you know, they can be assholes. But in this case, the swan, not the asshole. Florida man, 59, accused of punching <gasps> swan in front of off-duty officers. 59-year-old man was arrested at Lake Eola after police say he punched a swan over the weekend. According to Orlando police, two off-duty uh, officers were walking through the park and stopped to watch a swan and her babies. What are we doing? The man, later identified as Sor Angel Velez, was walking between the off-duty officers and the swan. According to the police report, the swan reached out toward Velez as if it were defending its babies. Officers said then they saw Velez walk around 10 feet farther, then turn around, walk back toward the swan before punching the bird. They say the man began to run, but he was caught. Velez was under arrest on a suspicion of injuring wildlife on public pro property. He pleaded no contest, was sentenced to 10 days in jail. If you come near a wild animal's <clears throat> babies, it's going to fuck you up. It's going to at very least threaten you. Really? Because this guy, this really this guy. Like, a wild animal with babies steps to you, the right response is to leave. It's not. Leave. Oh, oh, you think you're better than me? Bird? <laughs> just leave. You leave think alone. It's, that animal's just trying to protect their children. Go away. You think you know me? You think you're better than me? Huh? Huh? Come on. Come on. I'll, I'll, I'll take you. Come on. I'll fuck you up. Fucking bird. I'll fuck you up. You can't just punch wildlife. That's not okay. Like, if it's attacking you and it's life or death, because, yes, we did establish that swans are assholes. If a swan was attacking me, I would probably punch it to try and save myself. This is a different thing. Like, if that swan was Zeus raping me to create Helen of Troy, that's a whole other story. You totally punch Zeus if he's a swan and he's raping you. That's fair. <laughs> That's a deep mythology cut for all y'all. <laughs> I kind of doubt that was the case in, no, I, at I, all. <laughs> do we have to do our stampeding right now, you guys? Yes, they do. Do you hear it back and forth? I do. Get up, 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 get up. Is 
how, at what kind of point do you have to be in your life? You are 59 years, sir, you are 59 years old and you have, you are punching a bird. Your mama must be damn proud of you. You're 59 and you're, have you, you need to rethink some shit. Congratulations, you're Billy Madison. You're a fucking Adam Sandler movie. You are. Oh my God, he is. That that that's a fucking. When you're 59, and you're at a park, and your your first response to a bird defending its young is, "You don't fucking talk to me like that." No. <laughs> you punch Zeus on principle. Fuck Zeus. <laughs> that's true. That, that's fair. That is true. How do you get to that point in your life where this seems like the best option in the, in the circumstance? Don't you disrespect me, bird! <laughs> you just come from the Duck Dynasty marathon? It's... I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. That's... Just walk away. Just leave the poor bird alone. You were... That's just sad. It's just sad. Leave the poor goose and her little Ryan Goslings alone. <laughs> Go about your business. Uh, let's see. Wait, is this next one Florida? Because it sure sounds like a Florida story, this next one. This is awful. Guys, okay, this is one of those stories. Guys, if you're eating something, if you're drinking something, put it down. I'll just the guys or everybody? Everybody. Everybody. We, okay, we're doing the gender neutral yeah. guys. Yeah, everybody. I'll give you a swallow. Go ahead, swallow. Go ahead. All right, get it out. All right, are we, is everyone good? You know someone's going to make a gif of you saying swallow. Of course they are. I don't give a shit. Is everyone good? Are we all? I was being polite. This is your warning. You may want to skip this one. This certainly, I'm going to double check. Is this, is this a Florida story? Because it certainly sounds like a Florida story. Where is this from? Um, this is a Florida story. Pinellas County, Florida. Deep in the heart of stupid. My glasses are reflecting so weird. I've, I've, I don't say this. I don't, I guess this isn't really like a point of pride something or whatnot, but I've never been evicted. I've been fired from jobs in the past. I have, you know, had problems like that. And it sucks, but you deal with it. You pick yourself up, you move along, you do the paperwork you need to do, you find out how you need to proceed in your life to the next stage. Yeah. You do not do this! Suspect dumped vile slurry in pool. I I don't want to know what was in the slurry. You're going to know. Angered over his recent eviction from a mobile home park, a Florida man carried a five-gallon bucket, allegedly snuck back into the property and contaminated the community, uh, the community swimming pool, with a vile slurry that, quote, had the appearance of liquid feces slash diarrhea. According to investigators Thomas Lee Mason, 54, again, old enough to goddamn know better, Targeted the Embassy Mobile Home Park late Thursday night. Witnesses told cops they saw Mason, bucket in hand, entering the Clearwater Park, though he had no legitimate business there. Clearwater Park. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's, it works on two levels. Yeah. Uh, Mason, police charged, was spotted entering the pool area with a bucket and then leaving the area with the same bucket. That scares were charged Mason with pouring an unknown and dark-colored substance that had the appearance of liquid feces diarrhea into the pool. Criminal complaint alleges Mason is angry over his eviction from the park and is a suspect in several criminal mischief events in the last week there. This doesn't solve your problem. No! They're not going to welcome you back. No! Because you did this. It's not like, you pooped in the pool? Oh, man, we were so wrong about right. you. It's not like they're going to gain a whole new respect for you. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? You know what? When you were lighting cat's tails on fire and when you had, like, that pile of garbage in front of your house and when, you know, your child was running around with, like, a towel tied to their ass 
and nothing else. We were thinking maybe you weren't a good fit here, but now you're pooped in the pool. We were wrong. We were so wrong. I mean, I guess you can say he has sewn himself up a place to live for a while because he's going to jail. He is, yeah. So he won't have to worry about finding accommodations for a bit. That's... That's... This man actually... Silver lining. I can just imagine with this determined look on his face, pooping in a bucket going, they ain't heard the last of me. Yeah, because you have to save that, like... They, they, like they I'm sitting in the room with the litter box. I heard the last of me. And I'm here to tell you, it's like we have a covered litter box. It's not especially pleasant. Like we're anxiously awaiting the day they actually start using the self-cleaning litter box as more than just a sandbox to play in. Because right now I just find them swimming in it. <laughs> it's four hundred dollar litter box. Cat's gonna. And do, I, cat's gonna I do find what Dottie cat's doing do. this through the pellets. Tara, we have, we have a regular litter box until. Tara, oh, hi, Grady. He's actually sitting in his pet bed. Grady. This is this is the first time he's actually sat in his fucking pet. He normally tries to murder that thing. He's like, look, I'm a good kitty. Look, he lies about me. I'm a good kitty. You little... See, Internet? Nothing, you, nothing he says about me is true. Just, just, you son of a bitch. <laughs> cats love to make liars of you so so yeah i mean it's this is he had to sit there and plan and prepare this with this grim determination i know what i must do yeah you have to save up your own poop and that's not pleasant how are you gonna handle this well i'm going to poop in a bucket that's then, my plan yeah no no it's i'm not Seltzer. Do you think you might want to start looking for apartments? No. I'm pooping in a bucket tonight. Maybe speak to the ownership board about it? No, you're going to no. poop in a bucket. All right. Poop in a bucket. That's a choice. Um, our next one's baseball. Hey, baseball. Yay. I like baseball. You, you, you've been to live games, I take it. Oh, yeah. Quite a few. They're like not... Minutes. Now, I, I haven't been to a baseball game in years and years and years, but I would suspect they are not the sexiest of places. Uh, I mean, not I, I don't know if sexy is the word I would use. It's not, you know, a place. They're fun. With, yeah, but a great big stadium, big open air with concrete and steel. And yeah, I, I wouldn't. Think that would and be baseball season ranges from when it's really cold out to really hot out to really cold again. So that's not a place where you're going to go and and just suddenly sexy time, right? Probably not. But also, I don't like jail, yeah. or at least I don't imagine that I would. Uh, the, explain this shit. Someone explain this shit. Minor league ma fans receive major shock. <laughs> Spectator twenty four. Openly pleasured self during contest. Oh. Pennsylvania man who confessed to openly, quote, playing with himself last night while attending a minor league baseball game told cops he had become sexually excited due to the, quote, young college girls attending the game, as well as his receipt of an unexpected text from his former girlfriend. Okay. Andrew Verana, 24, was busted after fellow spectators at the State College Spikes Brooklyn Cyclones game. Oh, hey, that's the Mets minor league team, the Brooklyn Cyclones. Uh, reported him to Medler Field staff. One witness said that Verana was, quote, sitting with his legs spread open, his feet resting on the safety rail while he played with himself openly. When questioned by police, Verana reportedly copped to rubbing his genitals on three separate occasions. Verana, seen at night, said that he was sexually excited prior to arriving at the ballpark, but decided to go anyways. Well, that's what you call a foul ball. <laughs> Since you don't... Wait, did they say they caught him three times? Yes. So, three strikes? Three strikes for stroking? 
since you don't know enough to be ashamed, I'm going to be ashamed for you. <laughs> do they do they balk at his behavior? <laughs> My, they're so mad at me right now. I will not stop, and I will not think about what I've done. You know, when I was teenager, young adult, you would have those instances when suddenly, for no seemingly apparent reason, uh-oh, erection. That happens to guys. That happened to Nick Jonas at the Billboard <clears throat> Music Awards, apparently. Yeah, he talked to BuzzFeed about it, how he had to present an award with an unexpected erection, and that's why he was holding the envelope in front of his groin the whole time or something. But... My response to this was normally, I'm just going to suffer through this. I'll deal with it later when, you know, I'm not in public. Yeah, generally. I mean, I don't, I've clearly never had an erection because I don't have a dick, but I would assume that that would be the preferred method of dealing with it. You just sort of, you, you deal with it. You think, now here's what's killing me. Normally when this happens, you're supposed to think about baseball. <laughs> so That's not working. That apparently doesn't fucking work. Does not. I mean, I never really understood the thinking about baseball thing because you're thinking about like hard wood and tanned leather and sweat and you know. I mean, I guess. If you're not into dudes, that probably... That probably, yeah. There you go. All right. That. I just... Good Lord! We're literally just running back and forth. That's what they do. <laughs> now we're going to crush the little tunnel. Okay. Did you guys have cocaine recently? Did Daddy give you cocaine again? So, of all, I mean, just because you see something that you go, say, that's fairly sexy, doesn't mean you immediately start going, well, must take care of it right now. Yeah, no, like, uh, society has been built on not doing that. Yeah. And I love just proud as you please, he put his feet up with a safety rail, he's like, well, it's spanking time. What's the score? Don't care rubbing one out they were in pennsylvania which means he's quite possibly a phillies fan and philadelphia sports fans of every stripe are fucking savages eagles fans fucking savages phillies fans fucking savages whatever the fuck their hockey team is fucking savages like philly sports fans they some scientists built a robot to just to hitchhike across the country. It made it all the way across Europe safely. Got it made it most of the way across the United States safely. It got the shit beat out of it in, in Philadelphia, Philadelphia by a guy in an Eagles jersey. Fucking savages. Look at the look at the picture of this guy though. Yeah, that, he that, looks like a giant douche. That the is Phillies people. I, I don't care if you're mad at me, Philadelphia people. Your 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 baseball fans throw batteries at people. Come on now. Someone vomited on a kid on purpose. What? Yeah, Phillies fan vomited. The, like the opposing, there was an opposing fan with his kid and they vomited on the kid on purpose. Fucking savages. I don't care if you're mad at me, Philadelphia people. I don't care. Let's go Mets. We have one more animal story this week. Although, oh boy. Um... It has been a while since I've been driving and an animal has run out in front of my car. Although I will point point out since moving to uh, the Midwest, lots more deer run out in front of cars now. Don't know what it is about this area, but I've seen a lot more deers. And I know I'm going to Canada at the end of the month. Moose! But Moose. I've had to deal with this. Animal runs out in front of your car. You're not supposed to swerve, especially if you're on the interstate. Really? D yeah. What are you supposed to do? Slow down, but not stop. Or at worst, get into the median or the, the side, the, the breakdown lane. 
Do not swerve. Why? And do not stop. Why? Why? What if that's your only method of avoiding hitting it? This is why. Driver stops for ducks on Minnesota, Minnesota interstate causes crash. Okay, well, I get not stopping, but like swerving. I mean, I know swerving isn't safe. There might be someone in the other lane, but if... Driver who stopped for ducks caused a three-car crash on Interstate 694 Sunday morning. Minnesota State Patrol reports the crash happened just before 11.30 a.m. Troopers say a van driven by a crystal man stopped on the interstate to allow the ducks to pass. That's when an SUV driven by a Maple Grove man rear-ended the van. The SUV spun out and was hit by another SUV driven by a Brooklyn Center man. Minor in injuries, no life-threatening. The Minnesota State Patrol asked motorists not to stop on the interstate for ducks or other wildlife. But what are you supposed to do? Get in the breakdown lane and stop. Just fucking murder them? Well, if it's between that and... For one thing, they're ducks. For another, get in the breakdown lane and stop. If it's between killing a living thing and everybody getting a damaged fender, I will pick the damaged fender. Yeah, but it's the interstate, which 60 miles an hour and up. You can't just stop on the interstate. No. That's not can't allowed. Just kill a bunch of ducks either. <laughs> that then you stop in the breakdown lane. Because if you stop, you have to be in a place where something's not going to come up in behind you. Yeah. You move over into the breakdown lane and stop. You don't just stop where you are. You have yeah. to, this is one of those things where you have to be paying attention where you drive. You have to scan ahead. You scan well, yes. ahead, you can see something ahead of you, and you can get the fuck out the way. You can't just go. if you're scanning enough ahead, you should be able to throw your hazards on and slow down so other people behind you know. But you cannot stop. Anyway. You cannot stop. Because what? the tips at the <clears throat> bottom of the article. Okay. Oh, okay. Basically what we just said. Yeah, so. you can't cool. do it. I know you're like, oh, but the ducks. Okay. Yes, it'd be very sad if the ducks got hit by a car. But in this case, people had to go to the hospital. Now, they were non-life-threatening injuries. But that's a lot of fucking money. Money? Living thing. The duck. The duck would win for you. The duck is a living thing. Money is money. For me, I had a one My day. mom once ran over a pigeon when we were on a family trip to Washington, D.C., and she had to pull over the car and cry. I had a, Pigeons are rats with wings. I had a one-day hospital stay before the American Care Act and all that, the Affordable Care Act. I had a one-day hospital stay. Hi. $10,000. That shit put me in serious debt. It took me forever to pay that off. Yeah. One day hospital stay. But the ducklings. <laughs> or somebody could have been killed in that crash. Yeah. But you can't just, like, there's got to be some in between there. Like, <laughs> Well, you can't tell the you can't tell the ducks. Look, you can't cross here. You're gonna have to go up to the light to cross, ducks. Actually, what city was it? Some city did build a overpass specifically for like ducks and turtles and stuff that were getting hit by cars. So they built an overpass from one area to the other that they tend to. And what did they do with? to the ducks that didn't use it? Give them a ticket. No, they like made it, they made it attractive enough that they would use it. They created something the ducks would want to use. I don't care if they're not an endangered species. You people are fucking cold. I, if you're going to be, Just kill it. if it's a little fuzzy duckling or 
six people behind me and me. I'm not saying you should let the people die either. Like, yes, you can't just slam on the brakes on the highway. That is true. It's but the highway. I'm just saying there are solutions that do not necessarily involve just mowing down the ducks with a heart of stone. Yes, but also and don't... there are situations where that's impossible. I understand that before you guys get all pedantic on me. Like there, there are, there are going to be times when you have no choice but to mow down the cute fuzzy ducks or you will die. I get that. You can't stop but on in the interstate. In situations, you're probably going to have a sensible alternative to either causing a 50 car pile up or mowing down the ducks. Like, and in this case, it was the breakdown lane. But no, but he stopped in the middle of the down, interstate. Slow down, put on the hazards, get out of the, Yeah. You can't stop in the middle of the interstate. It's not, it's not optional. Yeah. You have to keep going. Yes, That's, that is true. You have to stop in the middle. You can't do that. That's bad. I drive on the highway every day. I, I'm going to put it this way. People are going, every day. people are saying it's not like it's a 50 car pileup. If it was a 50 car pileup, we probably wouldn't be reporting on it because someone would be seriously dead. We don't do not those necessarily. stories. You used to get a lot of 50 car pileups in Connecticut that they end up because the concussive force lessens as you go back. So it ends up just being a lot of fucked up cars and minor injuries. Believe me, people in Connecticut can't drive for shit. Well, what we've learned this week, number one is... Wow, I pissed off Connecticutians and Philadelphians tonight. You're just, you're, you're, you're going for, uh, for fuck's sake. We've learned you cannot stop on the interstate. That's what the yeah. breakdown lane is for. But do your best not to kill things. Well, it's not like, it's not like, nah, just mow everything the fuck down. It was starting to sound that way in the chat. And get this large blood sheen on and your I hood. And you to consider that choice. We're not, we're not going all Mad Max here. Okay. Good. We've learned that if you happen to be in public and you're... What I, I don't know what what do people call it these days? What what do they affectionately refer to their genitalia as? What do human people do like that? I don't know. If you get an <laughs> erection, don't just start stroking it. You can't yeah. do that. It's it's yeah. that's what monkeys do. We've also Dragon learned ball game. The only the only sausage you should be enjoying is on a bun with fried onions. We've also learned that if your plan involves you shitting in a bucket and you're not trying to grow potatoes on Mars, <laughs> it's a bad plan. Yeah. Shitting in a bucket, not normally part of a good plan. We've said it before. We will undoubtedly have to say it again. Poop is not a plan. It's not a plan. Poop is not a plan. We've learned... If you're 59 years old and you're punching a bird. What was with violence against birds this week, man? The article didn't say if the, if the duck survived either. I'm sure everybody's going, there's got to be one person listening. Going, but what happened to the ducks? Are the ducks okay? I hope the ducks are okay. What the fuck happened to the ducks? I hope the ducks are okay and I hope the swan is okay. You should not be 59 years old punching a bird. No. Question your no life. Time. Yeah. Question it. Unless the bird is attacking you. Well, yeah. That's a different story. But don't run up to the bird. I'm going to teach you to fucking disrespect. No, the bird doesn't care. No. You're not proving anything except you're an idiot. The bird does not is not concerned with your ego. We've learned monkeys do not do what you expect them to do. You can't no. you can't fire monkeys. We've learned no. that. Yes, you cannot fire monkeys. They don't they don't know how to fill out a pink slip. They don't know how to do unemployment. You can't fire no. monkeys. No. They don't know how to go to the grocery store. No, you can't fire monkeys. They they don't know food stamps. They they you can't. Don't hire them cuz you can't fire them. Come here, you little Miss Grant. What are you doing? Yeah, and and the last thing we've learned related oh, is that buddy. cats huh. are cats are little obnoxious shit sometimes. No, no, you're not, are you? No, you're a little angel. I'm trying. I gotta fight with Dottie right now, mommy. I'm busy. I got important kitten stuff to do. I gotta go. 
I gotta go. And Dottie's back. Dottie's here, like, unhand her. We're busy. <laughs> Mine's asleep in front of a shit box, so. 